Another man down in Congress, bringing the Republican majority to a very, very slim margin. And if it gets slimmer, if the Democrats retake the House, we got some concern that they may have what it takes to get Trump off the 2024 ballot. And they're going to be able to hang their hat on the SCOTUS decision in Anderson, which of course was the Colorado ballot removal case, which came back out nine to zero. And so we're talking about this in the context of Representative Mike Gallagher, who is now leaving Congress and he's leaving like now. Now, like any day now, he's going to be out. Same with Ken Buck, same with some other Congress people. And okay, that's fine if they want to leave, right? Congress people decide not to run for re-election all the time. That's not a big deal. But why are they leaving right now? Why is there going to be this window of potential opportunity where if the House flips, okay, a couple options here, the House flips to the Democrats because let's say three or four more Republicans get out of here for whatever reason, or what if two or three Republicans just flip over, join the Democrats and say that they're going to give Hakeem Jeffries the gavel, right? That could happen as well. Who knows? But here's the point. We have a retirement of this representative who by the numbers is going to cause the margin to be very small. And we're going to talk about how this might implicate a ballot removal strategy in five steps. So here is the background from Politico. This is the latest. And these are very unexplained exits. Why are these people all leaving? Johnson's margin drops to only one vote. Uh Uh-oh. As Gallagher heads for the early exit. Exit. Now Johnson is about to drop to one vote majority because Gallagher is leaving. Soon as next month, in a statement shortly put out after this story was published, he said he's going to leave on the 19th of April. Now we'll read his statement, but Wisconsin law dictates that Gallagher's seat in a solidly red district will stay empty for the rest of his term. Huh? So isn't that weird? So it's going to stay empty. Now, if he would have left before April 9th, that would have triggered a special election. So let's be very clear about this. It is a solid red district. If this guy leaves on April 8th, Okay, they're going to have a special election. They're going to put another Republican in the seat. So the House would have a vote, okay, plus one. Now we have zero. We're actually losing a seat. So he is, I think, doing this strategically, right? So he is going to say, I'm going to leave on the 19th. That way it's going to be empty this whole time. So the Republicans are down a seat and they can't replace it. He wrote his little statement, Wisconsin law dictates that Gallagher's seat will stay empty now for the rest of the term. If he would have left 10 days early, then they could have replaced them, but now not. Now there's going to be empty. You don't get a vote. The Wisconsin Republican announced earlier this year he would not seek re-election. Okay, that's fine. Finish your term! After he received blowback for voting against impeaching Mayorkas, his allies, however, say he was long jaded by the antics following the ouster of McCarthy. It's bad timing for Johnson, who is now potentially facing a vote on his ouster in the upcoming weeks. Marjorie filed motion to vacate, which I don't think is going to go anywhere. I think she recognized how bad this is. We're going to see in a minute how close we are to losing this. Over Johnson working with Democrats, at the moment, no other Republicans have said they support her. Gallagher's decision not to finish out the term furthers fuel concerns over the conference trajectory headed into November. It's tough with a five-seat majority. It's tough with a two-seat majority. One is going to be the same. We all have to work together. We're all going to have to unite if we're going to get some things done, said Steve Scalise. House lawmakers left D.C. Friday on a two-week recess, meaning that the soonest Green, Marjorie, could call for a vote. I don't think that's going to happen. If she pushes for a vote after that date. She's not. Gallagher is one of the several House Republicans who decided to call it quits this year. Others have left. Patrick Mahenry's out. Kay Granger is retiring, but they're going at the end of their terms. Good. Granger also announced on Friday that she would be leaving her post on appropriations early. So now their decisions have sparked interest given their ages. Gallagher's 39. Why is he leaving? McHenry's 48. What's next for either is unclear. Gallagher is going to continue to work on national security issues. Yeah. But his premature departure is surprising. Talking about the TikTok bill, he was a centrist vote, widely viewed as leading in cyber policy. They expect this is only going to be a speed bump, right? They're going to continue to work through this. Now, let me show you just how tight and close these numbers are right after we listen to Gallagher's statement. Here is what he said in his official resignation, which is just pathetic. He wrote a statement from Congressman Mike Gallagher, who for some reason conveniently timed it to do maximum damage to the Republican Party. Thanks, brother. Mike Gallagher. After conversations with my family, I've made the decision to resign my position effective April 19th, 10 days after the deadline so that we could get another Republican in there to have a red vote. Good job. Says, quote, I've worked closely with the House Republican leadership on this timeline and looking forward to seeing Speaker Johnson appoint a new chair to carry out the work against the Chinese Communist Party, whatever. My office will continue to operate and provide constituent services on the 8th District for 
the remainder of the term. Great. So your office will still field phone calls, but you're not going to be in there to vote. Great. Totally useless. Four terms serving Northeast Wisconsin in Congress has been a great honor. I'm going to be proud of my work. It's been an honor to serve. Useless. Useless. Yeah. Where is he going to go? Of course, he's going over to some, you know, defense contractor. And I would imagine, right, that there is a strong incentive for him. We're going to give you a big fat landing pad, but you got to come over here at this time, right? So the seat's going to stay open. And I think a lot of this is by design. And we're going to reread the Anderson opinion with this in mind. What happens if the Democrats control the House? Watch, we're going to read it. It's scary. But here are the numbers. By the numbers, Axios put those together. It says the House GOP will face a one vote majority as another Republican plans the exit. Now the chair of the China Select Committee's out. Why this matters, it's going to be a one vote margin when Gallagher leaves. And that's set to dwindle even further later in April. What? So a special election to replace Brian Higgins is set for April 30th. All right. So just keep track at home, my friends. Brian Higgins, who's a Democrat, is not there currently. And so another Democrat's going to come back in in April 30th. So Gallagher was already planning to retire at the end of the session, but now it's going to be an empty spot, right? So plus one goes to zero. After conversations with my family, he's left. He was seen as a rising star and we don't know why he's leaving. By the numbers though, so check this out. Republicans are set to be down to just 218 members to Democrats 213. So when Ken Buck leaves, he's leaving, I guess, Friday. Gallagher will bring that to 217. Okay, so it'll be 217 to 213. Republicans will be able to afford just one defection on any party line vote when Gallagher leaves. Any more would cause a bill to fail. Now Higgins' replacement will bring that up. The Democrats are also down one, so they have a plus zero position, but they're going to get that back. So they're going to have a plus one there in the Higgins spot. So it's going to be 217 to 214. Once Gallagher leaves, ours will be at 217. Once Higgins comes back, it's at 214. So 217 to 214. So we got three, either Republicans leave, defections, or let's say they just don't even need three. Well, I mean, if they defected to the other side, right, just do the math on that. What if they defected? What if you get some squishy Republicans that just defect and vote with Democrats? But then, of course, if the Republicans are in control, then Johnson may prevent any bill like this from hitting the floor. But my point is, we are very close. We are on a razor's edge. Three special elections are coming up in May and June. So there's going to be a special election to replace Buck and other Republicans will almost certainly give Republicans some other breathing room. So there are three spots that might flip. What happens if, you know, someone like Buck comes back? Buck gets replaced by someone like Buck who decides that Trump's an insurrectionist. We are on the precipice. So Republicans were already panicking when Buck announced his resignation, but now Gallagher's departure is going to set off a five alarm fire. Like, uh, wow. You can almost see it happening, right? But Mike Johnson is essentially dispensed of of party line votes. That's why Johnson is voting with the left on everything. He's got like no power at all. Bipartisan legislation, vote in favor of voting on major bipartisan legislation under a process that requires bills to pass with a two thirds majority. Okay, so this is where my question comes in. What type of legislation could the House pass? Could it be a simple majority or why does it need to be two thirds majority? Because those are House rules, right? Like the House just set their own rules. So what happens if the Democrats take control and there's a three vote split. Well, obviously, I think it's a pretty simple plot, not even complicated. Democrats retake the House. They take power. Hakeem Jeffries gets the gavel. They pass some legislation. I don't know how that works, right? They write some new rules, whatever. No one knows how this works. Okay, so we just wake up one morning and there's a big thousand page bill on someone's desk. None of them read it. They all vote for it. So who the hell knows, right? I don't know. But they cobble together a resolution, whatever. It's not an impeachment. It's just a resolution. It's just a bill. It's just a whatever. It's it's legislation, as the case is going to tell us. They pass it. It goes over to the Senate. Clearly Democrats. They sign that overnight. Just what happened with this bill today. Okay, so just envision what happened with the current bill, the $1.2 trillion spending bill. They just do it again with Trump. Goes to Biden's desk. He signs it. And then this whole thing is supported by a 9-0 Supreme Court decision. Okay, in other words, this case gives them a basis for doing this. They say, well, the Supreme Court said so. And it's not going to be challengeable in court. Or if it will, it's going to be a tall, tall statement standard to show why Trump should stay on the ballot. So let me show you now. Let's reread just a small portion of Anderson, a tiny portion of Anderson.
in just to show you what's going on. You know, this one feels like there's something weird afoot. These Congress people just keep dropping out. So remember in this opinion, this is the nine to zero opinion and it's nine zero, right? So there was a question about this being a dissent for some reason. And then maybe the dissenter joined back with the majority. Why? I don't know. Put on the tinfoil hats. Okay. But here is what this opinion says. For its part, the Colorado Supreme Court, which was wrong, they overturned it. They concluded that there must be a determination before you remove someone and you disqualify them under the 14th Amendment. That's the insurrection clause. What is the determination, you're asking? Who gets to decide? This was the whole point of the ballot removal case. Jenna Griswold and the Colorado courts, they thought that they could make the determination. The Supreme Court said, no, you don't get to make that determination. You know who does? Congress. The Constitution, this is our SCOTUS writing, and they just came out with this. Congress is empowered. The Constitution empowers Congress to prescribe how those determinations should be made. The relevant provision is Section 5, which enables Congress, subject, of course, to judicial review, meaning the courts can take a second look at this, so like, don't get carried away, and maybe that's a safety valve, but Congress has the power that enables Congress, here it is, to pass appropriate legislation. See that in quotes? What is that? I don't know. What is appropriate legislation? To enforce the 14th Amendment. Huh, 51% vote, that's it, right? A House rep plus one. Now, again, this is not like impeachment, right? This is not like a impeachment standard where you gotta go impeachment and then two thirds conviction in the Senate, no. Or as Senator Howard put it upon at the time that the amendment was framed, he wrote in this Congress, he said, section five, it casts upon Congress the responsibility of seeing to it for the future that all sections of the amendment are carried out in good faith, right? So the Democrats could come in and they just pass appropriate legislation according to their rules. They said section five is critical when it comes to section three. During a debate, hundreds of men were holding office in violation of their terms and they put together a bill. They wrote the Enforcement Act of 1870, right? It was pursuant to the power conferred by section five of the 14th amendment. That's how they brought it in. Now that's what we get from SCOTUS, okay? They're not giving us much more. So they say Congress, right? Congress can decide. Now this case rests on the question, can the states also decide? No, okay, the states cannot decide. Sorry, Colorado. Sorry, Crazy Eyes Griswold. They can govern the states, but it doesn't extend to federal office holders. So that is troubling, right? Now, if Congress just decide, look, there's not much more meat to that. Appropriate legislation, hmm. not an impeachment. So if they get control of the House, I expect this to happen. And I really hope that they do not. And I think it's still probably a long shot that they do because there's still a couple of those seats that are up there in contention. But if they retake the House, the appropriate legislation, I don't know what standard that is gonna be. And Trump's gonna have to challenge that. They'll just remove him. And then Trump would have to file a lawsuit, litigate all of that again, and we'd see what the Supreme Court says about it. But they set a standard. And if Congress passes legislation, uh, you know, it's gonna be a tall hill to climb. So troubling, troubling, troubling indeed. And we've got, you know, a lot of this is happening, but Marjorie said that there was gonna be a motion to vacate. Clay Higgins says that's gonna be a pretty big mistake. Clay Higgins has some serious credibility in my view based on his J6 committee report, which was just outstanding. So anyways, here's what he says, paying all due respect to Marjorie, this guy's like holding together, you know, like Spider-Man in that scene where he's trying to stop that subway from falling off the cliff. Because if Hakeem gets this gavel back, we're in big trouble. Yes, I consider Marjorie Taylor Greene to be my friend. She's still my friend, but she just made a big mistake. You know, trying to vacate Mike Johnson, totally oppose that. Listen, Mike is a very good man. He begins every day from the right place. He's deeply principled. He's like a brother to me. And to think that one of our Republican colleagues would call for his ouster right now, it's, it's really, it's abhorrent to me. And I oppose it. I stand with Mike Johnson. He is maybe the only guy in history that could potentially perform and help us navigate through these very dark and challenging times when he has to deal with a one vote majority in the House of Representatives. He's got a Democrat controlled Senate and a weaponized Democrat controlled White House. You got one guy that can deal with that. You know who it is? My brother, Mike Johnson. I stand with Mike. Expect my colleagues to unanimously oppose this big mistake that was presented today. Again, a lady that I consider a friend. Sometimes friend makes mistakes. And in this case, Marjorie has made a big mistake.
mistake. I stand with Mike Johnson. All right, so you can almost hear the precariousness in his voice. It's, we're, you know, right on the brink there. But apparently Marjorie, I think, is getting the message on it. You know, the big concern is what happens if Johnson's out. You know, do some Republicans join with some Democrats to bring in Hakeem? That could be catastrophic. So she filed a motion to vacate. Many Republicans slammed it. So unfortunate, Nancy Pelosi said. Other people said, are you effing kidding me? We're not supporting that. What did it mean? She filed a motion to vacate the same procedural move used last year. What Green did not do was trigger action on the motion, okay, or start any clock on this so it doesn't guarantee action on the proposal at all. Yeah, Green said on Friday she was not looking for a repeat of the weeks of mayhem that followed the removal and will be trying to formulate a plan for electing a new leader before triggering the resolution. So it's just filed but not going on. The House is set to go on a two-week vacay and it's going to give her time to rally colleagues. Green said Friday she believes the GOP voters do not want to see a Republican speaker that's held in place by Democrats. And we definitely don't want a Democrat speaker either. Her charge against Johnson is he keeps spending bills, which I agree. It's like uh, wild. We were mocking it today. You know, you're a trillionaire. You're a trillionaire. We're all going to be trillionaires soon. Tools been used frequently. It's wonky, but are they going to vote on this in two weeks? No guarantee of that. Green could have called up the resolution and forced it. Instead, she is sitting on what amounts to just a threat. She said, you know, I'm not saying it's not going to happen in two weeks or it won't happen in two months. Who knows? So I think she'll probably walk it back, right? In short, many of the rebels who were upset with Speaker McCarthy weren't on board with Green. So, all right, my friends. So I know it is troubling indeed, right? Very troubling news. And I don't know what's going on with these Republicans. You know, keep bailing out. Like, why now? Again, it's fine. Okay, you don't want to leave? I can't blame you. It's a dumpster fire in there, man. I can't believe you were there as long as you were. But why right now? To me, I think it implies that there's some strategy here, okay? He got a job at Raytheon or he got a job with, you know, Boeing or BlackRock or whatever and timed it appropriately. So my question is, they don't need that many more to go. Three people, the whole thing flips. Between now, you know, who else is going to have, you know, a visit from the CIA? You're done now. Thanks for playing. Or they've just got Ken Buck's election. They can go, you know, rig that election up or whatever. So it is hanging in the balance. And I think that SCOTUS is now going to lay a foundation for them to use that and be supported by a 9-0 Supreme Court. So if you have a squishy Republican congressman, make sure they don't go anywhere. All right. Make sure they stay right butts in seats between now and the next election because this thing seems problematic. And so my friends, thank you for joining us. We're going to keep covering this and try to assemble all their little tyrannical strategies between now and 2024. Thank you for joining us as we do. I greatly appreciate you subscribing. It means we'll be back here and see each other the next time. We also have a lot of great links down in the description below. Watchingthewatchers.locals.com. If you'd like to join us for some streams in the morning or on Saturday, we talk about some other affairs that we can't get into here. We have a great community as well. We'd love to have you join us. Watchingthewatchers.locals.com. Links are in the description. We'll see you over there and back here on the next one. Thank you.